my story's got to do with their messaging in regards to the three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation bill. Now, uh, there was a quote that was said by here. I got it written down. Uh, the White House spokesman Andrew Bates on Friday talking to Axios, and this is his words. He said, "The bill's price tag is zero dollars because it will be paid by." by ending failed special tax giveaways for the richest taxpayers and for big corporations, adding nothing to the debt. So, of course, all of us sitting at this table understand how math works and know that everything that was just verbalized is completely preposterous and has no groundings in reality. But I think there's somewhat of, like, their strategy that's revealed with some of the sentiment that they're communicating here. Because I think when we look back at the earlier months of the Biden presidency, what we were seeing is them trotting out these extremely progressive, extremely expensive bills and trying to have them kind of passed on an individual basis. So they trot it out there. They kind of do the whole public relations lap with the mainstream media just to see what kind of approval they get. But what I think that they discovered, much to their surprise, is there's actually very little appetite in the American population for bills that are stuffed full of pork and cost trillions of dollars. And so we saw that happen with the COVID uh, recovery plan in the beginning, Mm -hmm. where they had to pass that through reconciliation Mm -hmm. because they couldn't clear the 60 vote threshold of the filibuster. We saw the For the People Act come to a grinding halt because they couldn't reach that threshold. Mm -hmm. Absolutely thankfully for that. We saw the same thing with the Equality Act where they tried to once again push this forward We saw this even with the infrastructure bill that was negotiated on a bipartisan basis where they had to get 10 Republicans to come over who actually also yanked a trillion dollars out of the bill. Mm -hmm. When it was initially proposed, it was 2.2 trillion, even though it settled on 1.2 trillion. So I think what they've discovered is that when they try and push these bills forward, there's no appetite for it, there's no support for it, and it's dead on arrival. So instead of them trying to do them all individually, I see the reconciliation as just all of it being jammed into one mega package. So my question to you two is, do you think, like, you know, let's once again put ourselves in their shoes, which might be difficult, you know. uh, Do we think it's strategically viable for them to try and push for these pieces of legislation individually? Is there even a a somewhat greater chance of success grouping it? Or just is the third option, it doesn't really matter because the American public and the Congress will not support this legislation no matter which route that you choose. I think that if I were a Democrat, I would say we need to put as much in there and just ram it through because it, here's here's the strategy behind just making the plate so full you can't tell what you're eating is that's literally what they're doing. If, if there's so many huge issues within the bill, it's a lot harder for Dan Crenshaw or Ted Cruz to get up and go, hey, this is what's happening. This is what's going to go on when this bill passes. If there's like five or six critical key issues there, it's a lot more difficult difficult to uh, message across to Americans that, hey, all six of these things are going to get passed, not just one. Um, I know that one of the bills that that people were kind of more familiar with, I think it was like the equal rights bills, that what they called it for um, the LGBT community. And uh, even there, it, it there was a lot of issues because it was halting, you know, Catholic schools from um, not accepting gay teachers and it was allowing or making, forcing nuns to um, uh, buy birth control at convents or use birth control, which is against the Catholic Church. And so there were all of these really, really key issues where it really wasn't about rights. It was about imposing leftist ideologies and beliefs on Americans. And there people can really see the issue. Um, And so I think it comes down to the idea that, that when it comes to a Democrat look at policy, Democrats are all about um, the me-centered like view of politics. What is going to happen for me? Where where conservatives are, leave me alone, you can do what you want, don't impose on me. But now we're coming at a point of, no, you need to accept what I do, you need to promote what I do, otherwise you're a bigot. It's not good enough to just leave people alone anymore. Yeah, the you know, I, th- I think some of the thinking behind some of this is that this bill is so big it's got something in it for everyone, right? They're, they're trying to get votes by, by packing stuff in here so that everybody has a reason to vote for it. The problem with that thinking is that it also gives more reasons for people to vote against it, right? right. There, you put, you put, there's, there's nothing that's going to pass with everybody that everyone's going to vote for, right? 
Anything you put in the bill, you risk somebody saying, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, so I don't know that the strategy is going to be successful for them. Their problem is, for them, time. They've only got a year, right? A little little more than a year uh, before the 2022 20, midterms. There's a very good chance that the Democrats are going to lose the House. They're probably going to uh, lose their uh, majority in, uh, well, you know, counting Harris, in the Senate. Um but he, but it, it, as long as it only takes one, right? As long as the Republicans take one House of Congress, uh, that's that's it for the Biden agenda. It's it's over. So uh, I think they are thinking. I think part of the thinking here is we just don't have time to piecemeal this thing. We've got to get this stuff done, and we got to get it done quickly. Not only before Congress potentially changes hands, but before they have to run. That, you know, there are things in all of these bills that will be hung like albatrosses ac- around their necks, and they want to get as they want to pass the bill and get as far down the road from it as possible, so that they can people will forget about it and they can run on on other issues. So time is a big factor for them now. Yeah, and I think it's just important to mention that this is a staggering amount of money. Oh gosh, yeah. like we spent four trillion dollars winning World War II. Right. Defeating the Axis powers. Right. And we're going to spend three and a half trillion dollars on human infrastructure. Yeah. Whatever I mean, that means. I'm sure there's something in a three and a half trillion dollar bill, like you said, that even the three of us believe in. Sure. But when yeah, you I'm pair sure it inseparably from all these other pieces of legislation that we think are going to be corrosive to the country's moral fiber, to be degrading to the economy, it doesn't matter if there's something in there for you and me when the overwhelming majority of it is garbage. Yeah. And the. You know, the, again, the American people, we don't always have the longest uh, attention span, but we're not dumb. We do know at some level, except for those on the, the farthest left, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So when they, they come out <laughs> and say there's no, there's no cost associated with this, no one believes that. No, no one believes that's true. <laughs> 